Hi guys, this week we are talking about the differences between plant cells and animal cells. Before we get started, let's just review the differences between the cells that we've already learned about and the cells we're learning about today. So bacteria are prokaryotic cells. They're very small. Because they're prokaryotic, they don't have a nucleus, and they're the simplest type of cells that exist. Protists are eukaryotes, so they have a true nucleus um, that stores their DNA. They can be plant-like or animal-like. They're very diverse, um, and they use cilia, flagella, or pseudopods to move. Today, we're going to talk about plant and animal cells. They are eukaryotic, so they have a nucleus. Last time we said you can remember this because you are eukaryotic, your cells have a nucleus. They're large compared to bacteria and they have all the organelles. All right, here's a diagram of a plant cell. Two things that are really important are that this cell has a cell wall and chloroplasts. So chloroplasts are what the cells use to do photosynthesis, to make their food. This is why they're considered to be autotrophs because they can make their own food. The cell wall is a really rigid structure. It's made of cellulose and protein and it protects the cell and keeps it in a set shape. So plant cells do not have the same flexible outer membrane that animal cells do. However, they still do have a cell membrane. It's just inside of the cell wall. And that's because the cell membrane allows things like water and small molecules to pass in and out of the cell. The cell wall does not. So it still needs to have a cell membrane. Otherwise, the plant cell has all the same things that the animal cell would have. You can see the nucleus here, the ER, um, a very large vacuole because your plant cells can't just go get a drink of water whenever they want. So they have to be able to store water. Here is an animal cell. You can see it's also very complex. Here's the nucleus showing that it's eukaryotic. Um, Absent from this cell is the chloroplast and the cell wall, but it still has this plasma membrane. This might look like it's a rigid structure in this picture, but it's not. It's flexible and can move. Um, and here's some structures that look a little bit pseudopod-like. Um, they're not pseudopods, but the plasma membrane can stretch and change, as you know, because you know about pseudopods. You also might have noticed that there were mitochondria in both of the cell types, plant and animal, and that's because both plants and animals use mitochondria to produce energy for their cells. So just to recap in words, animal cells have nucleus, cytoplasm, cell membrane, ribosomes, and mitochondria to make ATP, which is the usable energy. Um, plant cells are the only cells that will have a cell wall and chloroplasts and they have a larger vacuole to store water. Something that's important and that we're gonna be talking about more next week is that all cells are not the same. So plant cells and animal cells are part of multicellular organisms, which means that there are millions and trillions and billions of cells that are used to make up these organisms. And what they do is they form tissues and organs and organ systems. So animal cells might have all the same organelles in common, but they have different structures and different jobs. So one cell might have more mitochondria than another cell because it needs to make more energy. This is the same with human cells. So every cell in your body is not exactly the same, even though it has exactly the same DNA. So even though your nerve cells look different from your blood cells, they have the same DNA inside of them. We're going to talk more about that later on. Finally, something that you must know is that all cells do have a few of the same organelles, bacteria, protists, plants, and animals. And these organelles are cell membranes, ribosomes to make proteins, DNA, their genetic material, and cytoplasm, that filling of the cell. And this tells us that all cells are related to each other, that these organelles are especially important to survival, and that if these organelles are not a part of something, then that something is not a cell. All right, that's it for this time. See you next week to talk about tissues, organs, and organ systems.